uh, you told about uh, starting a new church and what if when we start a new church and we gather new people and uh, some of those people have their idea about their beautiful dream church and they come to the leaders of the church say I would like to have this ministry in the church and that ministry and another ministry in the church how we should go about this mm. <laughs> You know, it's always a great thing when, when other believers are motivated and they say, I want to be a part of a church plant. And it's true. We all come with our own particular ideas, you know, of a church we've been in that we love and they have a great ministry and we want to see that reproduced. And, and maybe it's a good idea, maybe not. But when we talk later, we're going to talk about the preparation phase for a church plant. Before you even begin to do any kind of overt ministry, you need to have your team of people get together and you've got to have a common vision. Now, there may not be a lot of detail in that, but it's very important that everybody, at least in that initial core team, has a common vision and a common understanding of what's essential and what's not essential. So somebody may come and say, well, you know, we had this great ministry of uh, reaching to street children or something in another church. And we have to say, is that essential to what we're going to do? Or is that something maybe later, way down, maybe later we can do that. But in the early stages, you really have to focus on what is essential. And so the other thing you have to look out for is strong personalities. Um, we'll talk a little about this more later also. But very often, a new church plant will attract other believers who have very strong ideas. And they see a chance. They say, this is a small church. It's a little church. I can come in and, although I'm a small person, I can have big influence. And so I can kind of get my way of what I always wanted because this is a little church and they're glad to have anybody come and help. So you do need to, to sort of slow down people like that and say, you know, slow down. This is what our vision is. If you can come alongside of this vision, wonderful. But we can't have a lot of people bringing in a lot of extra agenda. So that's a really sensitive leadership issue. We'll talk a little bit more about creating that sense of vision later down in some of our sessions. Okay, other questions? Uh, <laughs> you mentioned in your material uh, the sectarian church planting. Is it about planting the sect? <laughs> yeah, uh, the word sectarian uh, can be understood like a sect, what we would consider like Jehovah's Witnesses or a group that not, does not have orthodox biblical teaching. Uh, that's, that's not what I meant. Uh, what I meant was a particular denomination. Uh, that terminology came from um, Stuart Murray's book on church planning. He's an Englishman. But essentially, I'm not talking about sectarian and some sort of little sect that, that does secret things and has uh, false teaching. But just talking about, so you might consider, you know, a Baptist uh, denomination or Presbyterian denomination or a Lutheran denomination. That's what I meant, but when I meant sectarian was really denominational. Uh, quite often can hear that in Russia people say, well, I have heard about the church, uh, and I'm disillusioned, disillusioned about the church and uh, their church leaders. So I better stay alone with God in my heart. What would you say? Right. First of all, we have to understand that many people have had negative experiences in the church. It's true. And not try and justify that. Uh, there's, there's no excuse for a church to treat people in harmful ways. Um, and that does happen, unfortunately. And so we need, first of all, just to understand that and not try and defend the church for things that it's done or is accused of rightly or wrongly. Uh, because usually people, often when they're saying that, they've, they've had a negative experience and, and that's sad. So we want to try and understand the person. But at the same time, we realize that the church is not perfect. Um, th the church is made up of sinful people. And as much as me, we may want to serve Christ and serve him in a pure way and in a correct way, the fact of the matter is we're still fallen people. We're not in heaven yet. And so we would hope that, that we would at least be humble people, that we would admit that we're not perfect. And I think where usually where people have the most problem is where um, a church has done something 
uh, harmful or lacking integrity, but nobody's willing to admit it. At the same time, we need to help people realize that even though the church is not perfect, you cannot live the Christian life alone. That's a myth. To think that you can just sort of be off in your own little prayer closet and, and love Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you're going to love other people. You're going to love the people I put alongside of you. Jesus says, you are now part of a spiritual family. You have brothers and sisters. You can't, you can't isolate yourself from your family. You have to bring yourself. God has given you gifts. Those spiritual gifts are not meant for you alone. You need to use those gifts to serve other people. And that's how we come to true maturity in Christ is through serving and caring. And, and where can we do that better than in the church? I mean, I can care for my colleague at the workplace, but that's not the same as being part of a body. Christ has placed us in a body. And so we need to, to live up to that and be humble enough to say, the church is not perfect and neither am I. You know what Billy Graham said, you know, somebody said, well, I haven't joined a church because I haven't found one that, you know, was good enough yet. And he said, well, if you find it, don't join it because as soon as you join it, it won't be perfect anymore. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, not a bad, totally bad answer. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.